Hello and welcome to the session on polygons. This is what do you buy under the funda. The sum of the interior angles in case of a polygon is n minus 2 into 180 degrees. Think about it. In a triangle, n is 3, sum of the angles is 180. In a quadrilateral, n is 4, number of sides is 4. So 4 minus 2, 2 into 180 or 360 degrees. This always holds true. Sum of the exterior angles is a constant value, that is 360 degrees. This does not change, it does not depend upon the number of sides of a polygon. The number of diagonals in a polygon is given by nc2 minus n. Think about it. If it's a n sided polygon, I have n vertices. From those n vertices, how many lines I can draw? I need to choose any two points. From n points, I can choose two points in nc2 ways. So this is my total number of lines. Out of these lines, n are my sides. So if I remove the number of sides from the lines, what will I get? I will get the number of diagonals. If you solve it out, it comes out as n into n minus 3 by 2. There is another method for arriving at this formula. Say, you pick up any particular vertex in the entire polygon. Now, you cannot draw a diagonal to that vertex itself. You cannot draw a diagonal to the vertex just on its left because it will be a side. You cannot draw a diagonal to the vertex just on its right because that will also be a side. So, from every vertex, you can draw n minus 3 diagonals. Total number of diagonals is n into n minus 3. Do you realize why am I dividing by 2 here? The reason for that is every diagonal will get counted twice. Say I make the diagonal AD in a polygon. That will be counted when I am counting the diagonals of A. That will also be counted when I am counting the diagonals of D. Since every diagonal is getting counted twice, I need to divide it by 2. Let us look at the special case of a regular polygon. We first need to understand what is a regular polygon. A regular polygon is that which can be inscribed in a circle is one condition. Another condition is that all its sides are equal to each other. Another condition is that all its angles are equal to each other. If any of these is given, is it good enough? No. Think about it. All four sides are equal. The quadrilateral can be a rhombus, but that is not a regular polygon. All four angles are equal in a quadrilateral. That means it's a rectangle, but it is still not a regular polygon. But if I am given both things, that all sides are equal and all angles are equal, that will mean it is a regular quadrilateral, it is a regular polygon and that will be a square. The angle, in case of a regular polygon, all of them will be equal. So each interior angle will be n minus 2 into 180 degree divided by n. Each exterior angle with the similar logic will be 360 degree by n. Let us look at few special polygons. I hope you will already know about square and parallelogram and rectangle. But the general quadrilateral so to say, suppose ABCD is my quadrilateral and its diagonals intersect at an angle of theta. Then its area will be given by half of D1 into D2 into sine theta. Please remember this formula is applicable for all quadrilaterals. That means whether it is a square, whether it is a kite, whether it is a rhombus, it always works. Think about it. In a rhombus, what happens? Theta is 90 degree, so its area is half D1, D2. In a kite, what happens? Theta is once again 90 degree, so again you can use simply half D1, D2 because sine 90 is 1. Special case would be a cyclic quadrilateral. A cyclic quadrilateral is such that all its four vertices lie on the circumference of the circle. In such a case, its area is given by square root of S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, S minus D. Where S is nothing else but the semi perimeter, which is A plus B plus C plus D by 2, and A, B, C, D are the sides of the quadrilateral. Let us say, and given such a quadrilateral, that a circle can be inscribed in it. What I mean is, the circle will touch all four sides, and the four sides are given to me as A, B, C, D. Then its area will be given by square root of A, B, C, D. Something like a square. In which, which is a cyclic quadrilateral and you can inscribe a circle in it. You can use any of these two formulas. As a matter of fact, if you want, you can also use half D1, D2. That will also work. If I am given a regular hexagon, which is a very prominent feature in most exams, that means it has six sides. All six sides are equal to each other and the length of them is A. Its area will be 3 root 3 by 2 A square. Why so? Because a hexagon can be assumed 
to be made up of six equilateral triangles and all equilateral triangles have the side A. So I can say its area is six times area of one equilateral triangle which is root 3 by 4 A square and if I work it out it will come out as 3 root 3 by 2 A square. Number of diagonals in case of a hexagon is 9. Want to use the formula n into n minus 3 by 2, 6 into 6 minus 3 by 2, which is 6 into 3, 18 by 2 or 9. Out of these 9 diagonals, 3 will be the big diagonal. If I look at this diagram, AD is a big diagonal, BE will be a big diagonal and FC will be the another big diagonal. Length of all these 3 diagonals will be 2A or twice the side. The other 6 diagonals will be the small diagonals. Which ones are those? AC, AE, FB, FD, EC and BD. And the length of all 6 of them is going to be root 3A. That wraps up the session on polygons. Please stay tuned at Handa Ka Funda to watch other videos on other chapters. Thank you.